I like to think of conflict management as three major pillars, understanding, preventing, and resolving. So often what you hear is about resolving. A lot of our focus has been, what do you do when something's gone wrong? That's great. Uh, I try to spend more of my life preventing problems. Those of you who are avoiders and accommodators, that should resonate with you. You don't want to deal with conflict, so shouldn't you help prevent it? That's the best way to avoid it, rather than when you're in conflict, avoiding resolving it. That's a harder situation to be in. For a while, I was teaching a conflict in teams class on campus here, very hands-on, and it was based on the idea of process consultation. There, what you're doing is you're observing team behavior, group behavior, and you're looking at the behaviors that are going on. Similar to what you saw in the neutral observer training, where you're looking at breaking down the conversation, not by your own assumptions, but by the behaviors that are happening. It has some of that element to it. But you're looking for things like roles in a group. Are they functioning? What are some of the dynamics that happen back and forth? I, I don't think win-win is a fair framework for us to operate under. I don't teach that when I go out in the real world. Uh, it, it's too soft to what actually happens. That's trusting that everyone's looking out for each other's interests. That's not the real world. Right? People will do what you let them get away with. So if, if, if you are going back to our conflict styles, if you are an accommodator and you're hanging out all the time with a computer, most likely you're not going to get what you want very often. That, that computer is not looking out for you, and you're looking out for the computer. So you have two people helping one person win and zero people helping yourself win. That, that's not a particularly win-win situation, and we get lots of those. We're not all walking around this earth as collaborators, or we'd have a very different planet. I, I, a lot of my mediation peers who teach mediation think of it like, a, like you're making sausage. Right? So just put it through the grinder, and something magical will come out. We don't know what happened in the middle, but it tastes good on the other side, so we're OK with it. Well, that doesn't always happen. If you put something in that sausage grinder that isn't very good to begin with, probably going to get some really awful things on the other side, too. And, and it's the same thing with negotiation or conversations or any of these, that if you're not thinking your way through it a little bit and understanding the tools that are in your toolbox, well, the process won't magically solve it. There have been great teams in terms of talent that underperform greatly because they can't get along. At the same time, getting along isn't a magic formula when it comes to performance. There's still more complex ways in which we have to interact, right? Who gets along well from our conflict styles that may not perform well? Let's say we had a team full of one style. What, what style might that be that I'm describing? Yeah. So imagine any team that requires interaction. Let's say a basketball team. And you have a team with 10 accommodators on that team. Yeah, it would be really pleasant to be around, right? Coach would ask them to do something. They'd do it. First idea, that sounds great. Not going to ruffle any feathers. They could be extremely talented from a basketball perspective. But because of that dynamic, they would likely underperform. Because sometimes you need someone to say, no, that's a bad idea. And no, that isn't going to get us what we need. No, that's not the position I should be playing. I'm seven foot two. I'm not a point guard. We see it in headlines all the time, right? Someone's a cheater. That's a whole different type of person if they're a cheater. It's very different. Well, even, even performance-enhancing drugs have nuance. right? Do we feel differently about it if we learn that the whole reason they were using performance-enhancing drugs is that it was the only way to gather country, and it was through running, and to get on the national team. Otherwise, they're going to serve in the war where they lost their brother. Maybe we feel differently. We don't call him a cheater anymore. We call him a survivor. We use different words. Right? Those are the kinds of things. We look for language. Well, you're a football team. How do you teach the offense? And they'll, they'll jump around. Oh, we, we chart it up. We, we give them the whole playbook. They read through it. Then we break it down to smaller elements. And we practice it. And we practice it. And practice it. We reinforce it. We have people on the sideline telling them what they're doing right and wrong. And they go on this whole explanation. And I say, well, that's how we teach conflict management skills too. Right? So the expectation can't be for you all to come out of here and be expert conflict resolution folk. But it can be that you have a, a, a curiosity and you all have the ability to learn. 
you know, all have the ability to go out and seek information. So that's really the, the, the goal.